Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this Back to Power Basics movie, we're going to look at dynamic changes to logical partitions. That's while the operating system is running in the logical partition, we're going to change the amount of CPU time, we're going to change the amount of memory, and we're going to add physical adapters to the running operating system. Here's my logical partition demo. It's the only thing running on this four-way machine. We can see it has two CPUs and four gigabytes of memory. And I started the profile here called dedicated. That's just a name. It's to remind me that this profile has the dedicated C regular CPUs in here. And we can do this, see the two CPUs here not doing everything. Now I'll quickly start a fake workload over here to keep our CPUs busy and we can see some effects as we go. We'll just watch that for a couple of seconds. And we can see that these little programs that I'm running are keeping this logical partition pretty busy. I mean, we, we might be worrying that uh, this is this is performing very well because there we are, we're hitting 100% CPU busy. So let's do some dynamic, we got dynamic logical partition changes. We've got processor here, memory, physical adapters for their slots in the back of the machine and we have uh, virtual and the whole Ethernet adapter. Now we'll look at CPU, we can add or remove CPUs or we can move them, that just means remove it from one logical partition and add it to the next. So in that case we want to do add. We can see that we've been assigned two CPUs as in our profile and the minimum and maximums are set to 1 and 4. Of course we can't go below one CPU we have dedicated CPUs, they're either all in the CPU or not. But we can limit to the maximum if you wanted to. In this case, let's just go straight to the four CPUs. I'll bring up the console here and we'll OK that. There we go, we can see the two extra CPUs have been added to our logical partition and the performance looks uh, a lot better here. We've got some idle time so we know that we can hit the user response time. Now we could do that all day long. It was fairly easy, wasn't it? Processor add or remove. Let's take it back down to two CPUs. Bring up the console again so we can watch it happen. One, two, back down to two CPUs. Now let's shut that workload off. And we'll show memory on this machine. Here we have the four gigabytes of physical memory. And we'll do a logical partition dynamic memory add. Here the minimum and maximum are 1 and 6 and we currently have 4 gigabytes. Now if I put in say 8 in here, this is above the maximum, we'll actually get an error saying no, we're not allowed to go that high because our maximum set for our logical partition is 6. So let's go up to the 6, bring up the console again, we'll OK that. Now this does take a little bit more work in the machine, we can see here the memory being added chunk by chunk up to the 6 gigabytes. Now if we're removing memory from a logical partition, in this case the memory would be unused so we could quickly take it out. But if the memory was used, there was valid pages in the memory, then the copy of AX would have to page that out onto the paging space to free up the memory to actually then let it be deallocated and taken from the logical partition. So that can take uh, more time and it will actually produce a um, performance uh, hit when we actually do that operation because as we know paging slows down our machines. So let me remove this and bring in a larger console, here we go, so we can read the writing clearly. Uh, we'll just look at the adapters in our logical partition here. We have a virtual serial, this is our console that we're just using. 
we have some disks connected to our SAS adapter here actually on the planer of the machine then we have the logical host Ethernet adapter and port so this is the network we're using now if we do a dynamic processor physical add and we get here a list of the adapters in the machine that are not assigned to a logical partition so let's give ourselves a Ethernet controller and fiber channel adapter as well if that's enough for now we'll just OK that Yeah, if we go back to here, we do ls dev again. We can see I'm informed that these things have arrived and has brought them online. Here's our uh, fiber channel adapter. New Ethernet adapter is actually a two port Ethernet adapter, so we see two ports here already defined. We can run the config manager command to actually bring those um, online and start using those immediately. If we were removing those from our logical partition, we'd have to use rm dev command to remove them so that AX is no longer aware of them and then we can actually remove them from our logical partition. Next we'd like to show what happens when we've got a shared processor partition rather than a dedicated processor partition. So the first thing I have to do is shut down. We'll do an immediate here. saying it's not recommended but it's a demo system and no we're not replacing a battery we'll see here that the codes have changed we've gone to shutting down we're not active so let's start it up again normal instead of dedicated starting up again propeller here means we're reading the disk X kernel's been read in we're starting up we're up and running. Now if we do dynamic logic so add or remove we'll see the options are different here. In this profile the minimum was one CPU and the maximum immediately notice that we have fractions of a CPU here and I could change this to something much finer something like this take it down a quarter of a processor. The virtual processor numbers tell us how we're going to spread out this amount of CPU time across our CPUs so that one and three quarter CPUs can be spread across three CPUs. In fact AIX will decide if that's good or not, if it can use less CPUs it, it will. It gains a little bit of performance when it does that but we can change that dynamically as well. We can also go uncapped in which case we can go over this assignment here now and borrow CPU cycles if they're free and the weight factor is that when more than one logical partition wants to go over its assignment then it decides which is more important and you'll get the CPU cycles based on the ratio of your weights. Won't actually do that today.